All right, good morning, guys. YouTube people, world, whoever, wherever. Got the toolbox somewhat cleaned off. Enough for the parts I'm going to need to use. Anyway, working on my 2014 Audi A6 TDI. Going to be placing some parts here. Um... Went over this in a previous video. Basically, <clears throat> I'm changing uh, this seal here. Yeah, that seal there. Um, this O-ring here. This seal here. The circlip there. And then uh, output shaft. Hopefully it's right. So, um, yeah, so there's a, basically you got to take off these, I think there's like six, six or seven bolts here, which go onto this side of the transmission. Um, the front, uh, differential right here. So the way I'm going to attack this is <clears throat> I'm going to take the axles out, both both axles. Let's see, it really doesn't show. Um, yeah, I got this from uh, from a ZF Transmissions website. Just an exploded view of the transmission parts. Um, but anyway, yeah. So. My attack is, I already have the car in the air, obviously. Um, got it on jack stands. So, got the wheels loose. Um, actually, let me back up. I broke the axle bolts loose with a 19 millimeter, H19. Got it from Harbor Freight. So, I broke those loose with a big breaker bar, both sides. Um, you don't want to take this all the way out uh, with the weight of the vehicle. Just break them loose because this is a two-piece bearing. So the weight of the tire and everything, the weight of the car with the wheel on there, um, the whole axle, the bearing will separate basically. Um, you could use an H19 or a uh, three-quarter inch. So I bought both just in case one broke because when you tighten them down, remember this, I'm not going to repeat it. You have to tighten them down to 200 Newton meters and then 180 degrees. So I'll probably do 90 and then 90. Uh, what I broke it loose with was <clears throat> this three quarter inch Herber Freight. I don't know how tall that is. Two and a half feet breaker bar with an adapter um, from three quarter to half inch I just broke them loose with that and uh, yeah took the tires off um, and right now I'm gonna take you gotta take the whole belly of the car off the whole skid plate thing off and then uh, start taking the axles the axle bolts off. Let's see, let's see how good the Harbor Freight flashlights are. Supposedly this one's a little easier, but it doesn't look like it. I watched a video on a guy doing this axle, and I'm assuming his heat shield wasn't there. So I'll have to take the heat shield off this one. And uh, yeah, basically there's at least six uh triple square 10 millimeter bolts back there that hold the axle on um i'm gonna check my driver's side axle and everything make sure it's all good or the passenger side sorry passenger side axle because i might need to order an axle and i might have to go to a transmission or an axle drive shaft shop and I might see if I can get 
an additional shim so that I can shim this over because I do get a little bit of whining um, on the descent of hills. Um, it gets a little weep, little whine. So what I've read and what I've reviewed and watched, uh, they say that this um, wobbles inside there, gets worn out. So when I take this out, I'll compare it to the new one. Um, parts. So this is the seal kit. So I think that's the part number right there. Pause the video. Go do your own homework. Um, I do have some differential uh, additive stuff. So yeah, this comes with supposedly new bolts. We'll find out. Um, seals and a new circlip for the axle. So this it did not come with this. I should I should note I bought this separately. Anyway, so we got that, and then we have this. This is the stub shaft. I think that's the part number right there. The zero B six or it might be OB six. I'm pretty sure it's zero B six. Um. Anyway, so this is a stub shaft. Hopefully, hopefully it's the right one. Um, I messaged Volkswagen or maybe it was Auto Audi Parts dot com or something, and they said that it was this one, and I couldn't find it on my build. But for a an Audi Q5, there was one uh, listed. So they said that that's the one that matches my VIN number and everything. So we'll find out. If not, um, I know that the seal is leaking right here. If anything today or tomorrow or whatever, I accomplish anything. Um, it'll be new seals um, and it'll be sealed up basically and new, more new differential fluid. So anyway. We'll uh, keep you posted with the process. Um, it's like a million screws for the bottom pan, which I'm going to take off right now. And uh, I don't need to show you guys that. You'll figure it out. It's like a T30, a Phillips screwdriver, and 10 millimeter. It's like three different size bolts. Um, some are just like a quarter turn screw. So anyway, going to get under there, tear all that out, and then... Uh, yeah, I'll look. if I run into any issues, obviously, I'll let you guys know. So let me get into it before it gets too hot out here. All right, guys, got it out. <clears throat> got some recommendations. If uh, you're going to even attempt this, first attempt, uh, recommendation, don't do it. <laughs> Second recommendation is um, while this plate is on the car, take the stub shaft out if you can. Um, just take, take this, pop it loose. What I ended up doing is I stuck a bolt here, a bolt there, the axle bolts, tightened them down basically so they were on a ridge. I don't know, it'll fall on a, it'll, they'll fall on a ridge <clears throat> basically. So I tightened two bolts down all the way and then I stuck a pry bar in here and then it went, then you had to pry it some more, pry it some more and then uh, it fell out. So anyway, here's the old one. Here's the races. I cleaned it all up obviously because I wasn't going to film and get my brand new iPhone 14 Max Pro Super Duper, whatever. <laughs> anyway, got this all cleaned up, so I got to replace the seal. Oh, you can see where one of the bolts, the two bolts were touching. So one there, one there. They kind of just bottomed out. 
I don't think it did any real damage. It's pretty, that piece is kind of thick. So anyway, uh, yeah, I got to replace the seal. Um, bearings, man, they don't, they don't seem like they have that much play. And this is, this is basically dry, cleaned up, sprayed, you know, whole can of brake cleaner on this bad boy. Anyway, uh, yeah, so definitely pull the stub shaft out. If you do anything, pull the stub shaft out. Um, I ended up pulling this axle out or the half shaft, whatever you want to call it. Pulled that one out. It was three bolts, T40s. Three T40s right there. Um, this one slid right out. Doesn't have a circlip or snap ring or whatever you want to call it. Um, you don't have to disconnect, or at least I didn't. Um, don't have to disconnect any A-arms, control arms, nothing like that. Um, just when you do this one, turn the wheel, you know, to the right. Then this one will fall in, fall in, pull out. The other one's a little more difficult, which is why I said I wouldn't recommend this. So uh, got to take off a lot of shields. This shield, heat shields. This little cover right there. Um, kind of a pain. Let me get a flashlight. Oh, quick. So, same thing on this side. You need to, you know, disconnect the bolts for the axle. Turn the wheel towards the left. And, uh, yeah. This is what we got in there. So that seal, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it comes out from this side. Pretty sure it does. Um, anyway, the reason why you want to pull the stub shaft out is because you can't get the stub shaft, the cover, and the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The differential ring and pinion, ring gear, I don't know differential basically you can't get that out as one piece i tried which is why how i know um i also marked i noticed some of these bolts were a little longer than others there's 11 bolts i basically just drew out how they were and how they came out so 11 bolts t40s by the way um but yeah you can't you can't get the cover with it connected to this off. It's just impossible with the car, with the transmission still installed. So um, so basically it's like that. It's too thick. So I had to put it back in. I put two bolts in. Um, pop the stub shaft out. Pop the stub shaft off. Um, yeah, took that thing off. Took the two bolts back out. Took the cover off, pulled the diff out, or whatever you want to call it, differential. Um, but I don't really see anything different other than there's more of a taper on the old one versus the new one right inside there. So this one has a little more of a taper. Um... I measured uh, pretty much everything. If anything, this one seems a little bit fatter. So, take the calipers. I know this probably isn't a true good measurement. Twenty-nine six four to six six. Hold on here, what the heck's going on? Why is this thing jumping around? Harbor Freight for the win. Okay, you will have to read it upside down. So, 29... 
I don't know. So this one seems to be a tad smaller. Twenty nine nine two nine twenty nine nine two. Hmm. I don't know. I measured it. This one seemed to be a little bit smaller earlier. The actual shaft here. We got thirty nine point nine two. 39.90. I measured everything. Everything's right. Everything's correct. Um, I'm going to end up throwing the new one in. Obviously, that was the whole point of this project. But, yeah, overall, I'm not really seeing any, any big differences. Maybe this lip is a little higher. I don't think so. But it's the same amount of spline. Same amount of everything. I don't know. I'll keep this as extra. Or if anybody needs one, let me know. Looks like I'll have one. Um, I do know that that hole in there is a little deeper. Possibly, possibly not. Um, I do have numbers for the races. So this is the, the passenger race. Made in Korea. In California. Which I'm in California, but... Joke's not on me. Anyway. There's a number. J-O... J021-112-16. Korea. And, uh... There's the other number. F567252.06.2. TR1-DY. Oh, sorry. That is, uh... That is the driver's side. Smaller one. Smaller one is driver's side. This one also resides in California. J0414-0856-19. Kind of wonder if that's the date for some reason. Korea. Here's the other numbers. F567. 257.tr1 tr1-dz so i'm going to try to see if i can find races uh bearings that coincide with those and uh if i do i'm going to throw them in if not i'm just going to put this thing back together this is the o-ring um, I don't think it was leaking out of the O-ring. I'm pretty sure it was leaking out of the seal here. Because uh, this is how it sits. Like that. And it was coated with uh, gear oil from here down. As you can see all the... This is all cleaned in that uh, Suds lab. I cleaned it with this stuff. Worked amazing, of course. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm assuming that this seal is bad. So I'm going to replace this seal, that o ring, the other seal, and uh, go from there. So I'll let you guys know if I can find the bearings. If I can't find the bearings, I'm pretty much just going to throw it back together. I don't know what all these bolts are for. It didn't come with any instructions. 
but those are not any of the bolts that I took out. I did not take any of these bolts out. So I don't know what those are for. Um, and I don't know what any of these are for because I didn't take any of these out either. So, yeah, I don't know. Don't really know. This came as a kit with the O-ring. So let's see the O-ring. And gaskets. Sorry, O-ring and seals. So, I'm assuming that O-ring goes there. Smaller o-ring is gonna go on the other side and then this o-ring, I don't know. Kinda wondering if it goes if this seal goes on the driver side. So seal passenger, seal driver, and I mean the drive shaft to seal. And then o-ring, I don't know. I don't know because this this uh technically fits multiple cars. So Let's see, O-ring looks the same. Anyway, I'm gonna do some research. I'm gonna go inside, eat some lunch. Um, it's been four hours. It's taken me four hours to tear this apart. Tear it down, fought that side obviously because I didn't take the stub shaft out. So if you're doing this, just take the stub shaft out please. All right guys, I'm gonna go. Um, I'll be back once uh, I figure everything out. We'll see you in the next video. Or sorry, not the next video. We'll see you coming up soon, I guess. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So, not welcome back, but anyway, update on what's going on. So, just basically waiting on parts. Basically, what, what we have going on is not sure how accurate this is or not, but I'm going to try it. So, this... So if you see the the race here, that race sticks up higher than than that piece, basically. So this sits pretty flush with this piece here. The I guess it's the main part of the bearing. So sorry, yeah, the main part of the bearing. So the bearing taper piece then you got the cage and then you got all the ball bearings in there so anyway the main piece sits level with this on this side and then you add this shim and it allows it to stick up two thousandths of an inch past the actual carrier so on the other side on the other side over down here um, basically with this spacer, it's sitting flush with this race. And this race, so the spacer sitting about, I measured two thousandths of an inch taller than the cage. Whereas on the other side, this spacer, shim, whatever you want to call it, is sitting pretty much flush pretty much flush with the cage. So me and my engineering skills um I couldn't I couldn't find a I couldn't find a shim that's this isn't the one but it's 88 millimeter outside and 80 millimeter inside and it's four millimeters you know I don't know in circumference or whatever you want to call it this measurement here so it's four millimeters all the way around. Then it's 88 millimeters outside diameter and 80 millimeter inside. So four millimeter, four millimeter, whatever. Um, anyway, so I couldn't find one. I found some that were 90 millimeter and 70 inside. I found some that were 85 millimeter and 70 inside. Could not find an 88 millimeter. So, um, and I can't. I could probably order this from Audi Volkswagen, possibly, but it's too thick. 
So I only need one to two thousandths of an inch shim, basically. So ran out to my barn. This isn't this isn't what I'm gonna use, but um, have an old ring set for a my old '72 Chevy pickup truck that had a 402 big block, which is 396 poured 10 over. So these are 396 uh, rings. So what I'm going to end up doing, if I can do the magic trick. Um, I'm going to take these. These are these are about two thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to take one of these, but not this size. And I'm going to stick it on there to compensate. These are actually like uh, uh, 1.8 or uh, 18 thousandths of an inch. So they're not technically 2 thousandths of an inch. So 18 thousandths of an inch. Anyway, so I got a set of Honda, Honda Civic uh, rings coming in. It's a set. I bought them on Amazon. Um, I think I bought them for 29 bucks for a set of rings on Amazon. So they're supposed to be here Sunday, Monday, Saturday, Monday. So one of those days. And uh, it's a 88 millimeter, basically piston, bore size. So, and I'm going to try that. I'm going to see how, how that works. If it works, then I'm going to use it. I'm going to run it. If it doesn't work, if it's not the right size, then... Uh, I'm just going to throw this uh, differential back in. So anyway, that's what I got. I was hoping these would match or come close, but they're not four and a quarter inch or something like that. And technically I need three and seven sixteenths inch round. So here's what it is. So that's uh, what I'm going to be waiting for. I did replace the inside seal. I did replace the seal on the outside on that housing so those are installed got the new ring here and like i said i don't know what these two seals are for just like i don't know what all those bolts are for so anyway guys um when those come in we'll check it out see if it works if it doesn't work i'll let you guys know if it works i'll let you know because there's a, probably about seven or eight youtube videos i watch that have the same amount of play and uh i think they end up just scrapping the car or getting rid of it for cheap which is probably why i got this car for cheap and uh yeah that's what i'm gonna go that's what i'm gonna do so you guys will find out when i find out all right so i ended up finding the actual shim and the kids in the backyard of parts so i found uh two shims this one's too small and too thick these shims are 20 thousandths of an inch. A little bit bowed and warped, but it'll work. So I have one of them down there. As you can see. So um, I'm just going to throw it in. I'm going to return uh, the oil rings or whatever the rings for the honda civic um i'm gonna like the way this fits better as opposed to uh the rings so the problem with the rings i think i'm gonna run into which is why I'm glad i remembered i had a part is they're gonna be really really narrow um a lot narrower than the, uh, well, I just installed it. But anyway, a lot narrower. I can't get this out with one hand. So, anyway, they're going to be a lot skinnier. So, it might uh, protrude through, basically. Whereas this is a lot fatter. So, um, I don't know. I don't remember what this was for. Um... I kind of want to say it was for, man, I, I'd be lying if I told you. I just don't remember if it was for the transmission, an NV4500 or a Dana 70. Um, 
it might be it might have been from the Dana seventy because I know the bearings were shot in there. Um, from the wheel bearings, so I'll do a little more research and try to see. I know I replaced them. I just don't know, remember um, what they were for. They might not be for the rear. I don't know. I don't know what they're for. All I know is the, we replaced them when we did work on his truck. I'll try to try to go on my eBay search and see if I can find them, find out what they're from, and uh, go from there. But, yeah, so the, the plan of attack is I'm going to put that – Axle shaft in there in the driver's side. So I'm gonna stick that in there, bolt it up with the three bolts so that it's it's in there. So when I put the differential in, um it holds on to something so it doesn't keep wanting to fall out like it was. And then after I get that installed, um I'll have to put the O-ring on here. Like I said, there's this new seal here and the new seal on the other side. So <laughs> Um, <clears throat> hopefully I can get in here to beat that stub shaft in. So, basically, um, the ring sits like this. So I'm going to stick it in like this and then rotate it up. There's not much room in here. You can see I beat up this little, uh, heat shield pretty bad. Uh, yesterday or day before when I was trying to take it apart. So, um, I'll have to bend that back up. But yeah, so the stub shaft will be sticking out here. Slide that differential on. I'm going to put some grease or uh, some, basically some stuff uh, on the bearings. And then uh, on both sides of the bearings, stick that differential in, get it set on that axle. And then uh, I'll stick the cover on. And... Uh, yeah, tighten all those down, torque them all to, I think it's 22 newton meters. They say 22 newton meters, and then 90 degrees. So 90, not 180. So 90 degrees. So anyway, so I'm going to try my best. It's really tight in here to do it. Um, But yeah, that's uh, my plan for today. And then uh, I'll probably go for a drive once I get it done today, just to see how it feels um one thing i did do with the axles you you can do too the axles uh this one was just just straight up liquid like gear oil basically in there so i drained all that out it goes it's a it's a hollow tube all the way through to here and uh yeah I drained as much out as i could um which was probably I don't know, quarter of a quart of fluid, but it's supposed to be grease. And I took a grease gun and uh, just pumped about 50, 60 pumps until it started coming back out. And then this axle doesn't plunger, or this CV doesn't plunger, that one does. So what I did is I just put my feet on those and pulled it up, it sucked it in, and I just held it there, and then it went... <laughs> like sucked it sucked it in i gave it about 10 more pumps and uh yeah i did all that to both axles the other axle didn't have any liquid in it uh it was just grease um but nothing came out so i just put like 20 pumps of grease on the other side machete anyway um yeah so i'm gonna throw it back together today um I'm going to drive drive it, like I said. Just go for like a 15, 20-minute drive. I am going to use some Liquid Molly. This stuff here, 7590, um, full synthetic. So it takes about, if I remember right, a half a quart. So I'm going to put that in there with that additive that I have over here. Wish I didn't block the name with the tag, but it's a liquid molly. I can't remember what it's called. I tried peeling this off, but it just wants to come off in pieces. 
So it's just a gear, a gear additive. It's made in Germany. Anyway, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some of this on the bearings themselves. I'll put it on the bearings and then, uh, or actually I'm going to put some grease on the bearings. And I'm going to add this, about half of this, maybe a quarter of this to the front diff. And go from there and hopefully all works good. I'll put this stub shaft, the new one in. I do have the sir clip somewhere. I don't know where it's at. Oh, right there. So I'll put the new clip on there and then you basically got to beat this in. So we'll find out. So and then button it all back up. Put all the axles in. Put the wheels on. Clean up everything. I'll probably go for a drive and... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do an update, but I'll do an update. I'll let you guys know at the end of this video. So, but right now I'm putting it all together. I'm not gonna record it because it's really greasy, really nasty, and I don't feel like getting phone and everything up in there. So just know that next time you see me, I'll probably be driving it, <laughs> or I'll probably. Yeah, I'll probably be driving it and then do a review while I'm driving it. So we'll see you then. All right, guys. So I drove the car about, I don't know, it's roughly 80, I don't know, 100 miles. I'll just call it 100 miles. On the differential shim and new gasket and stuff, obviously can't tell if it's leaking don't know if i will be able to tell it's leaking until the next oil change um or if i start smelling something or seeing something but yeah uh so far it's it seems to be good i do know i i'm pretty sure i need new tires i get a lot of noise off this front passenger tire and uh yeah so i'm in barstow California right now basically uh, at the hotel waiting for the rest of my work group and then uh, we'll just eat breakfast here and then go do our work and then off to Provo Utah anyway um, sounds good sounds about 80% better still a little little bit of wine kind of like me a little wine here and there um but overall i don't i don't know if if repacking or putting grease back in the axles made it better but or maybe the axle bolts the big bolts on the outside that compressed the the wheel bearing not sure if those we'll do that not sure if those weren't torqued right or not, but those are a pain in the butt, man. Um, you have to uh, torque them to 147 foot-pounds, and then you have to to uh, 180 degrees. And believe me, doing the last, I don't know, 45 degrees, I could have sworn one of those bolts or the socket the little uh, hex socket thing. I could have sworn one of those were about to just break. Um, it was a lot. I want to say it was probably about 250, 260 foot pounds, possibly. But they didn't break, so anyway. Yeah, so um, if you made it this far in the video, then thanks. If not, then you won't see this part, so it doesn't matter. But anyway... So I'm going to be driving another, after work today, we're going to drive another 200 miles and we're going to stop in Mesquite, uh, Nevada, the hotel tonight, and then we'll drive the other 300 and something miles to Provo, Utah, to wherever we're staying. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to give you guys a little update. Um, Yeah. So far, so good. Nothing nothing exploded. Nothing broke off. The axle didn't fall out of place. And the axle bolts didn't break. So, 
I think we're good. So, all right, guys. That's all I got. That's all I got. See you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, do what you guys do. And uh, thanks for being you. See you in the next video. Later.